coming to the most important part a airway examination first thing is you are going to look at the mouth opening if it is greater than 4 it is sufficient you look at the malambati scoring you look at the neck movement neck flexion and extension your neck circumference and your thyromental distance if it is uh, greater than 6.5 it is normal and you look at the ability to move the mandible over the maxilla and you also look at the any various other airway abnormalities and most important in the airway examination you always you have to examine the patient from the side also that is very important now coming to malambati classification we have flow classes of uh, malambati classification class 1 is you can see the soft palate you can see the fossas you can see the entire uvula as well as the filler that is malambati 1 entire thing will be visible in class 2 you can see the soft palate you can see a portion of uvula as well as the fossa see everything can be seen in class 2 up to class 1 and class 2 you are little bit safe in class 3 you can see little bit of soft palate and only the base of uvula and in class 4 only the hard palate is seen nothing else is seen another important thing is you have to number the tooth you usually number from 1 to 32 1 is for 1 to 16 is for upper and 16 17 to 32 is for lower so any tooth is missing for example if the fourth upper is missing you have to write upper four left or right you have to say it is missing that is very very important so what number upper or lower left or right you have to mention and particularly that tooth is missing or you have a denture or something or you have fixed an artificial denture to that place where it is fixed you have to document you have to show whether it is upper or lower and the number and which side right or left is very important and coming to the various aspects of airway examination the length of upper incisor if the incisor is going to be long your endoscope your uh, laryngoscopy is going to be difficult if this side you are going to put the component on the other side you are going to have non reassuring findings which might make your airway maintenance slightly difficult relation of the maxillary and the mandibular incisor during normal jaw closure here non reassuring finding is prominent overbite where your maxillary incisor is anterior to mandibular incisor relationship of maxillary and mandibular incisor during voluntary protrusion here mandibular incisor is anterior to maxillary incisor that is a non reassuring finding inter incisor distance if it is less than 3 it is bad visibility of uvula when the uvula is not visible when the tongue is protruded for example in malambati 3 or 4 it is a non reassuring finding shape of the palate either a highly arched or a very narrow palate is not good Compliance of the mandibular space. If the mandibular space is stiff, indurated, occupied by a mass or non resilient, it is very difficult. Thyromental distance. If it is less than three finger breadth, it is not good. Length of the neck. If short neck, it is going to be difficult intubation. Thickness of the neck. If it is thick, it is difficult. Range of motion of the head and neck. Patient cannot touch the chin to chest or cannot extend the neck those things are going to be really difficult and lastly you have to look at the condition of the teeth and the air presence in the face presence of heavy facial air is not good 